Hi, today we're going to be looking at some digital history archive information, primarily focusing on how to integrate it into a classroom. We're going to be looking at the very first step. So, we're looking at the Valley of the Shadow, which is a digital history project, the University of Virginia, the Virginia Center for Digital History. Um, and you see this really interesting infographic. Now this is where our web skills come into play. Looking at this for the first time, we want to take a minute and just look at what this is. It looks kind of like a map of an archive. Um, you imagine this as like floors in the building. So on the first floor we have fall of 1859 to spring 1861. Second floor is spring 1861 to spring 1865, the height of the war, and spring 1865 to 1870 after the war, kind of the uh, beginning of uh, rebuilding. Um, so we notice on the second floor here that there are images instead of statistics. I don't know if we can draw any inferences from that, but this is a good point to to uh, note, there's statistics here in the eve of the war and statistics in the aftermath and images during the war years. This is one of the things about digital history that you need to be aware of. Um, this implies that there are no statistics during the war years. Um, it's just a decision in reality that the creators of this archive made to include images during the war years because images before and after the war might not have been as important. You also notice that church records, official records, and Freedmen's Bureau changes from year to year. What they're doing is they're trying to make information available that they had access to in a meaningful way. Probably nothing more. They're not trying to add in interpretation on top of the archive. They're, they're leaving the interpretation to you. So if I'm teaching a lesson on the Civil War, the first place that I want to go to is before the war, um, because we're looking at the buildup. Um, if I'm teaching middle school, I want to go to the letters and diaries first. That's just my own personal viewpoint on it. Um, the reason I want to go to letters and diaries first is I think that will be the most interesting for students. And the first thing I'm just going to do, I'm going to go through these somewhat systematically. I'm going to look at Augusta County letters and diaries. And I'm going to start looking at these. Um, and I just want to get a feel for what is here, uh, what kinds of things are being said, maybe why were these collected. Um, it doesn't tell me, you know, necessarily why these letters were selected out of all of the ones that probably just the ones they had access to. Uh, Pre-war letter from Staunton to SS Brooke comments on the economic situation on in Staunton, the insurrection, slave sales. So look at this. Happy to inform you my safe arrival, nothing important. Money is scarce. Um, so this might be a good letter to deal with students, especially right now that, you know, a lot of people are struggling financially. It's a, it's a tough economic time here. In late 2011, we've been in a recession for a while. So scarce money um, is an interesting concept to explore with your students. Um, and to be honest, a considerable amount of excitement. Many persons are selling and sending. Oh, so um, we're looking at Augusta County, probably need to look at a map and figure out exactly where that is, but um, people are selling their slaves. Um, now we look at this letter and there might not be a lot to go on here, but there might be. I mean, it's going to require further exploration. Um, so let's look at the next letter. Okay, so she lived, okay, so Augusta County's in Virginia, if I remember correctly, Northern Virginia, never married, and according to family legend, she was about to marry when her sister, Marianne Summers, died in 1862, and then 
Mally dedicated her life to raising her sister's children. So, oh, look at this. We have links here to the census, slave owner census, and the 1870 census. Um, because the Clayton household is linked to here. Uh, let's read the, the letter and then come back to that. So, very interesting stuff. Um, written in a very different manner. But it gives us a, an idea of life in this time. Um, we are only tolerably well at this time. I have a very bad cold and a sore throat. See how they spell sore? Um, they, they, interesting, is a great many persons complaining of con their, okay, so that would be there is in modern uh, vocabulary. Uncle Tho Clayton, Uncle Tho's Clayton's families are all well, except for Cousin Henry, and it's just talking about the health and well-being of everybody. So it's a very different letter than the first one. Let's go back and see any information from the census. Uh, so, family number, so I guess they're bunched by family, their occupation is farmer. Um, last name, so that's interesting. Uh, so there's the 34 year old, the 65 year old, and tells us all the ages of these people in 1860. Um, farmer in their first district, uh, and it's, you know, some ethnic information, very interesting. Uh, slave owner census. So these are the, the, the different slaves that they have. Interesting information. And we obviously can see that William Clayton here is uh, kind of the patriarch, I would guess, of the family, uh, having in most slaves. Uh, that might be interesting. That might tell us a little bit more about this letter. Um, and then the census, you see kind of who made it through and who didn't. Oh, and their occupations. This is very interesting. So at the beginning, everybody was listed as either having a, being a farmer or having no occupation, no occupation unknown. Um, now we have all of these different occupations listed. So farmer, keeping house, farmer, keeping house, housekeeper, so keeping house, um, at school, at school, and clerk in a store. So it tells us a lot of information about the changes that the Civil War might have brought out about for this family. Also, you know, 10 years is a, is a big time. Alberta would have been born in 1860, so she might not have even been listed in the previous census. But it tells us about Melly Clayton um, and her family. Very interesting how this archive works. My intent in showing you this this morning, or whenever you see it, is to help you to begin to understand how you can explore a digital archive. When you do it, you're going to have a good idea of what you want to be exploring, ideas that you want to be engaging, and how you want to be approaching it with your students. You might approach it with your students differently than I thought about approaching it. You might approach it from the Census Bureau first and ask your students what are some changes that occurred because of the Civil War and ask them to look at pre and post census data. You might ask them to look at some letters. You might ask them to look at war records. You might ask them to pick a person who was deeply involved in the war and try and follow that person's family throughout the course of the war and see how it was influenced. All of these activities have value in engaging students first in primary source documents, second in the process of creating history, and third, maybe, in the process of helping the students to draw connections to a bit of history that they might otherwise not be able to feel related to. A lot of the struggles in the Civil War are struggles that our students today might be feeling. Um, again, the intent of this video was to kind of show you an overview of how to engage in an archive, what you might want to do, and some things that you might find there. I hope you find this useful.